Hello, class. Uh, this would be the continuation for section 9.3, and we are now going to uh, do hypothesis testing with T-scores and show you how to use technology to calculate the actual p-value. Uh, your calculator <clears throat> actually has really nice functions built in for not only the z-score p-values, uh, hypothesis testing, but the t-scores. Uh, I will show you how to do it uh, using uh, the Excel spreadsheet technology. And uh, there is something that you need to load into the spreadsheet. It's called a data analysis tool pack. And I've uploaded the instructions of that to our Canvas account. So if you plan on using the spreadsheet moving forward in chapters 9, 10, et cetera, you do need this uh, plugin. And it is quite helpful and it's free. So if you have the Excel spreadsheet, you might as well load it in. So with that, what we're going to do is walk through this problem. So uh, what this problem states is this is a generic drug that they're trying to compare to a, um, a well-known drug, right? And, and this idea of the brand name has a mean of 3.5 micrograms of active ingredients per square centimeter of skin. And here we have seven subjects and here are the means of the seven. And so how strong is this evidence that the mean absorbed differs from the uh, name brand, right? And so this would be a not equals. So when we set this up, Let me pull up the white part. This is set up as a not equals. And so it would be uh, HO equals uh, the mu, which was 3.5. And the H1 is implied the mu is not equal to 3.5. So we're going to do a two tail test in this case. And so the idea is we have n equals seven uh, degrees of freedom is uh, six. And what do we do for these calculations? Well, so what I would do uh, if we were going to do this. Uh, and calculate the critical value or the uh, test statistic, excuse me. Uh, I uploaded those values to the spreadsheet and I would use the spreadsheet to calculate the mean, which would be the average. So let me label that here, mean. And so if you do that calculation, that would be the average. I like those numbers and you get uh, almost three, right? 2.94. And then what's the sample standard deviation? Come up here and that would be the dot S for the sample standard deviation. And you highlight those and you hit okay. And it looks like it's almost 0.5. So those are the values that we need to use when we do these calculations with the test statistic. They uh, put these up on our whiteboard now. And so our mean value here is 2.94. And our standard deviation we'll call S is uh, 0.4995. And uh, I was just checking on what the book used and it gave a couple more uh, significant digits on the mean too. So I'm just adding the two nine. So when you calculate this test statistic, okay, it would be x minus the mu divided by uh, s square root of n. So when we stick all that in there, we would get um, 2.4995. Not, nine, nine, minus the three and a half 
and then we divide it by 0.4995 divided by square root of seven. So out comes a number of minus 2.951. And so remember, sometimes it's gonna be minus, right? So the minus would be the one down here and then the corresponding plus one would be here. So if you think about it, this would be minus 2.951. And what would be the one up here? 2.951. So the question is, how does these Z or T score numbers correspond to the um, probability uh, of those two tails that we're worried about? And so what do we need to do? We need to go look at the Z score table. And so I have the Z score table pulled up here. And so let's take a look. So our degrees of freedom is six. So this is kind of interesting because if you look at that, 5% uh, would be 1.9432, right? So if we're worried about 5%, looks like we're in good shape, right? But remember, we have to add both of them. So now that would be a total of 10%. And so, hmm. So let's look at the next z-score. This next z-score would be a total of 5%, right? 2.5% uh, on each side. So that t-score is 2.4469. So that would be uh, the 5% or two and a half on each tail. And we're still within that, right? Because our value was 2.97, I believe, a little bit bigger than that. But you see, when we get down to the 1%, which would be 2% total, all right? So that would be 1% uh, on each tail. You could see that number is 3.1426. So if you looked at the whiteboard again, let me pull up the whiteboard. Okay. So if I kind of stick these in here and let's just do uh, okay, red one here. So um, usually do more than 10%, right? So let's just start with the 5%. So the 5% was uh, 2.4469. And so that was two and a half percent this way, right? And the same thing over here. So that would be two and a half percent this way. So you could see that if, the, if our alpha was 5%, it would be close. But you could say, I could reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic is, uh, you know, greater than or, you know, less than if it was minus uh, the critical value. And so it's less than the 5%. But if you say we wanted to do say 4%, and let me pick a blue color there. We did 4%, that was, so the 4% was here, minus 3.14, or this would be plus 3.14. So this would be 2%. So you see we fit right in the middle of that. So here, depending on, you know, how secure you want this to be, it's right on the hairy edge, if you know what I mean. If you want to do 5%, you can definitely reject it. But if you wanted to do four, three, two, you couldn't. And so you would not reject. So uh, you can see sometimes uh, it's uh, nice to, uh, I would get more samples, <laughs> number one, but uh, it's kind of nice that when you do hypothesis testing that you know for sure, right? 0.1% is way better than 4%, right? So the other thing that I promised in this lecture was to show you how to use your technology to do these calculations, right? And uh, we're gonna be using two different technologies. Uh, some of the class is using the TI-84, and the book does a really good job of walking you through that experiment. And you could see that they use the same um, couple experiments that we used uh, 
in our examples. And I'll just pull up the second one, which was the uh, skin uh, cream or ointment experiment. And so this, the key here is you need to get all to these right functions. And there's a stats and then test and then t-test. And you can actually put the data in and run the t-test exactly and uh, with regards to the mean and it will calculate the t value right and you can see it's 2.95 same as the one that we calculated by hand right and here is the p-value that you want to calculate that was uh, about 2.5 percent right 0.022 and so that idea of uh, the p-value calculation, you could use your uh, TI-84, 83 uh, fancy calculator. So how do you do it if you were going to use the spreadsheet? And I'm gonna warn you right now, um, it's a little weird. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, what we are going to do is introduce a new uh, and here it is, but let me um, get rid of it. Let's see if I can delete this. Why well, won't it delete? Let's try again and we'll start up. So I do want to point out that uh, this again has to be uh, loaded onto your Excel as a plugin. And up on Canvas, you'll find the instructions to do that. I've been doing this for years, so mine's loaded in already. And you go to data, and then there's something called data analysis. And when you click on that, up comes all these different analysis. And we're going to use some of these moving forward. So this is good to get started. Uh, we're going to use the regression analysis for short. Uh, we might get to the ANOVA test as well, uh, but we'll see how things go and how far we get. But you can see here that we have these three t-tests here. And um, unfortunately, the Excel spreadsheet doesn't have a single t-test. It only has these two t-tests. And so to fake it out, we need to have two sets of data. And so the way to fake it out is to generate what we, what I like, and I, I didn't make this up, but it's called the dummy column. And you put in a couple of zeros. Zeros is a great number, it's not gonna change anything. So the idea is, is that when it does this, uh, the second data set's gonna be zero. And when you do this, we go up to data and what you're going to use is the third one of the t-test. It's called t-test two sample assuming unequal variances. And these two data sets will have unequal variances. So you click on that and up comes all this information. And so uh, you click on the first one and you can see I've highlighted uh, our data set, which is variable one range. The variable two range is the dummy data set. And then there's this hypothesis mean, and it says difference, but that is the hypothesis test. So in this case, it's three and a half. And then you get to pick your alpha. And your alpha in this case, I put in 0.05, you could put in 0.01. Uh, I think the book uses 0.01, so let's use that. And my labels, uh, you click that, and then the output range, which where this would be located, I'm just going to have it put out all the data there. And you hit OK, and voila. Double click that to spread it out. Uh, and you can see all the data is there staring you in the face. And so that's kind of nice. And so uh, here is the p-value that we calculated. Uh, this is the two-tail one that we were talking about, and here's the one-tail one, right? And so the two-tail was a little over 2%, right? And the one-tail was uh, about 1.25%. You know, and so what you end up doing is you uh, 
compare this value, right, with the alpha that you picked. And the alpha that we picked, right, in this case was 0.01, and you can see that this is greater than. So theoretically, you do not reject the null hypothesis. The idea that uh, our alpha that we picked was 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and that is less than our two-tail probability, which would be this value right here, and that would be 0 0.0225. This is true, so you do not reject. The strategy is this value wants to be less than, right? You want your probability calculation or your p-value to be less than the error that we're dealing with, which is the alpha. So don't get nervous about this plugin. Uh, it's quite useful. Uh, and so load it up and we're gonna play with it for the rest of the semester uh, with regards to uh, more complicated calculations. So that ends the recorded lecture for uh, section 9.3.